of ice. Uh, yeah, it's the right turn on the camera right in the icy part. Um, anyway, I had to go out anyway. <laughs> so I had to, I had to face the tree. <sighs> Emergency call. That was just so unnecessary. You know, it's like, I don't know. I, I mean, these are just the parts of life that are just kind of irritating. That, uh, you know, that whole good intentions thing, you know. <laughs> the road to hell is paved in good intentions. You know, it's, it's like I fixed something, and then somebody with good intentions <laughs> decided to fix it better. Uh, no, not a good idea. Oh, so anyway, it's just irritating. So anyway, just, you know, it's just a frozen sump pump thing issue and blah, blah, blah. And, oh. So, back to the story of psychology versus understanding. And that's all this conversation really is. Uh, I've said it before, that philosophy, psychology is not philosophy. And philosophy may provoke psychology, but philosophy isn't psychology. They're, they're two separate things. <clears throat> Sci philosophy must understand psychology, must acknowledge psychology, uh, and basically give psychology the finger. I mean, the one doesn't need the other. Okay, you know, your philosophy really doesn't need your psychology uh, beyond, uh, you know, to keep your body alive. And that's the truth of it. Um, but that's really what's at stake here. Will the human race live by their desire, or will they live by their faculty to reason, their understanding, uh, their ability to build uh, tools uh, like the truth? <laughs> you know, tools that will make the truth visible, let's say it that way. Isn't that what we've done? I mean, half the tools we build are for our own glorification or comfort, and the other half has been to discover the truth. It's important to most humans. They want to believe, anyway, that they're truth seekers. Uh, they use the rhetoric as if that's what they're after. And uh, I think it's just a, an obvious argument to be made that you're not going to find the truth inside your psychology. You're going to find the truth uh, dissecting your psychology. Uh, you're going to find the truth uh, recognizing the context of your existence in kind of sterile, clinical, and not very uh, comforting or gratifying uh, ways. You're not going to, you know, the real images, you know what I'm saying? If, you, if I gave you close-up pictures of your skin, you'd say, ooh, gross. If I give you close-up pictures of what's growing in your mouth, the living things squirming about, you'll say, gross. And if I give you close-up pictures of your fucking psychology, you're going to say, gross. Because it's all gross. It's all grossly crude, grossly mechanistic, uh, grossly unflattering, grossly <laughs> pitiful, uh, sad, grossly tragic, and that's the truth of it. You're living lies, you're living delusions, you're functional retards based on uh, the volume of information you know about those. You've seen way too many slides, you know what I mean? You just don't have much of an education when it comes to understanding uh, the mechanism of your psychology. You just don't. And most people just haven't. That's the truth of it, right? Most people haven't seen the slides of their biological organisms. Most people haven't seen uh, their organs, uh, you know, in their bloody reality. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, sitting in the pool of blood inside their torso. They just haven't seen what they really are made out of. And, 
you know, these people talk like they are boldly going, the Anaconavod types, like they're, you know, in the, you know, fantastic voyage spaceship, well, uh, int body ship, whatever you want to call it, micro ship, and they're going to go see the truth, <sighs> you know, through archaic philosophy, <laughs> you know, through mumbo jumboing. And, uh, no, you're going to do it with that science thing, with that uh, clinical cold view, that those hard logical facts that you keep running from because there's nothing in it for you. Yeah. But that's really what this is about. If you're seeking the truth, the truth is you're going to analyze your psychology. You're going to really take a good look at yourself and you're going to see yourself as just a a little wanky, um, takey, selfish, conniving, weaseling, uh, <clears throat> um, need machine. A little I want machine. Uh, and that's it. And that's the only saving grace, the only, the only thing to give us some sort of sense of peace or relaxation is the knowledge that we can apply knowledge rationally, fairly, decently, correctly, uh, all of those things. We are capable of it. Uh, we see it demonstrated. Uh, your brain is hungry to do that. It's just that there's a competing program that keeps saying, don't look in the mirror, don't look in the mirror. I don't want to know. So that's the problem. You have competing programs that are defensive of themselves and they want to feel pride. They want to enjoy vanity. They want to do all of those things. And it really is okay. You just have to acknowledge that those feelings aren't philosophy. That they're just something human monkeys do and that that's okay, but you don't use those as rationalizations and excuses uh, to do things you know aren't right. Things you can understand to be dangerous or destructive or hurtful. You just don't, it's okay to be a psychology, just don't be owned by it. And understand that the best part of your brain is the intelligent part. Oh my god, I put my gloves on. Yeah, I'm really overheated, so I had some overheating to work on. So I was okay for a while here, but it's getting cold. Ugh. Yeah, I really had to hustle. Right. Get home before dark. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll make it. Uh, well, the worst part is up in terms of the ice is, well, no, the worst part is up there. Well, as long as I can get across the stream without getting wet, I'll be happy. Well, that's not all I need. See, but that's it. I'm going through my list of what I need. I need, I need, I need. And that's the, you know, we're so focused on what I need. It really does preoccupy us. Every time I come on this side, I get lost. I mean, it's, I still know where the stream is, but I mean, I just lost in sense of I can't get the a distance bearing. And there might be bears over here. Bear country on the side of the stream. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and mad dogs too. Rabbit evil dogs. And uh whew, maybe some fruit flies too. Fruit flies. Uh anyway. Maybe. Uh yeah, so I think yeah, I, I've gotta push this point harder. I have made an awful lot of videos saying the words philosophy and psychology and trying to 
get people to recognize that psychology and philosophy are two different things. But we'll see how we go. All right, here's hell. <laughs> now I gotta scoot across here. Oh, I did make it, so hopefully I'll be able to do the same thing successfully. I'll put this in here. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I have that much to say more. Whoa, what the hell is that? Oh, the ice cracking. It's an ice quake. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to slide my bananas across the screen. Bananas, see, I get paid in bananas. So it is kind of funny. I really do live a monkey's life. A minky. <laughs> <coughs> Come on, bananas. Go, go, bananas. Well, now they didn't quite make it. Great. I don't have a stick with me. Like a girl, but it worked. <laughs> and I'm gonna fall on the ice, get my banana. Oh. 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 Ooh, my penis. It's kind of nice. Anyway, um, oof. Hey, tree. Yeah, it's good for me too. Anyway, um, but yeah, we're. We're fantasy characters, really, inside of our brains. We're, you know, the, the, the kid joke of, like, a kid wearing his underoos isn't that far. We never really grow out of having a, a personality, you know. And, uh, but the point is we can still have a philosophy that, that owns our personality, that knows that our personality is just a personality. It's just a, a collection of, of uh, subjective, uh, personally conditioned through a personal life, uh, you know, subjective tastes, uh, that's the right word is used, conditioned responses, uh, and that they aren't the definition of right and wrong. They're not the definition of good or bad. The fact that you want to live or want to go skydiving before you die or whatever your unsatisfied ambition is, is just a function of your psychology. Psychology keeps creating goals for you. Obviously, I think you can understand evolutionarily an organism wouldn't survive very long if it didn't keep redefining goals, re-establishing goals, you know, complete a task, start a task. That's kind of what we're built to do. Uh, and so, of course, we're, when we're playing the game, we're playing the game. But we should be able to acknowledge that the game is stupid. Just like you can get over your alcoholism or your sports addiction, or your soap opera addiction, or your gamer addiction, or any other addiction you might have acquired, your meat addiction. All these are easily altered, and you will, in hindsight, looking back at them, uh, be almost embarrassed that you could have been uh, compelled or obsessed with such trivial nonsense that such garbage uh, could own you so deeply. Uh, and so that's the kind of thing I would say to the gray text kind of comment when he says most people want to live or the more, the more specific argument of that somehow we have to drop dead tomorrow. 
uh, you know, to take responsibility for the fact that there doesn't need to be a long future. Uh, the needs are in you, and when you're gone, the needs are gone. You don't need to make a new need holder. You just don't. Don't make the container for the needs, and the needs won't show up. Uh, lots of logical ways to look at it. So anyway, probably enough. It's getting a bit dark, but I can still see the ground. And always get uh, the ca these cameras are pretty good. These flip cameras in the dark. I mean, they're no good in the dark. I mean, they're pretty good in twilight. Uh, I don't see anything else. That's probably enough, and it's, it's kind of crunchy, so I'll finish up inside. Uh, I guess I'll return to the Graytex video. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, till next time. Jeez, what a day. Ah, back inside. Forgot to turn the heat on, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyway, yeah. Ugh. As soon as I get home, right? The barely working furnace at the neighbor house stopped barely working, so I had to fucking get that barely working again. <sighs> anyway, been quite a delay. Anyway, <clears throat> back to gray text now. Alright, so this is going to be a lot of weird video here. Probably have to do this in two parts or something, I don't know. Let's see, I'll see how it all works out. You'll see how it works out. Ending all life in the universe, and then the universe will be a not bad place. Right, right, right. Again, this really doesn't have anything to do with your personal life. You get to live out your personal life. Everything is exactly the same. And the only difference is, yeah, there's no future, right? That's right. There's no, after you're dead, we don't make more of them. So we just basically immortalize you forever as being the last generation of perfection. And then you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> you can almost feel good about it, like, yeah, we were the best it did. Uh, you know, it's almost good for your ego. So you don't lose. The, the, the current generation has to sacrifice absolutely nothing but their diluted mental image of humanity going into the future and doing what? Getting diarrhea on the moon. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing we need to do here. We have done it over and over and over again. We've smelled every smell. We've tasted every taste. People have done every kind of perverted thing possible with their penises. There's just nothing left to do. Um, so, you know, and I don't think it's feasible that we can convince people to exchange those values. Why should they? That we can. <laughs> yeah. Um, exchanging what values again? What are they sacrificing? They're sacrificing a notion in their head that there must be human beings 10,000 years from now or 100,000 years from now. The fact is there won't be human beings some million years from now because by then there will be some kind of cataclysmic awful thing is going to happen. I mean, it seems quite obvious that we're going to make something happen. I mean, human beings are just not going to live with each other civilly. That is just not going to happen. But even if we don't do it, nature's going to take care of the problem. It's going to do something cataclysmic, and life is going to be so horrid and disgusting that people will then be saying, oh, come on, let's just stop this. Why should people ditch their subjective values that they hold and then pick up your subjective values? Okay, like it was all subjective. Like we're just talking about whether you like toast with, uh, you know, cinnamon or whether you like toast with peanut butter or blah, blah, blah. Like it's all the same thing. And there's like, there's no distinction between values made out of subjective addictions like I'm addicted to soccer and he's addicted to football and he's addicted to this and she's addicted to that 
those kind of change, those kind of perceptions of values and values like, oh, it's really awful when somebody's trapped in a burning car on the highway and you go rescue them or something, or you have an obligation to do something or blah, blah, blah. Those values, the values of sentience in distress versus the subjective values of, oh, I like to watch this TV show. So again, you know, this is just so freaking idiotic, right? He's basically comparing um, psychological tastes in, in fantasy programming to philosophical understanding of the context of our um, traveling on this planet. And so these aren't exchanges in subjective values, these are sub exchanges in objective understanding of reality. It's always something. Alright, back again. I'll try again. And such. Mouse. Come on, mouse. Work. There it goes. Instead, um, why shouldn't you ditch your subjective values and hold it? Again, so, I, I mean, what's the point? You know, I, wait, it's subjective. So, yeah, I arrive on planet Earth, I open my eyes, I look around the world, I say, ooh, that's bad, ooh, that's kind of gross, that's disgusting, ooh, this is fun. Um, yeah, and I basically say, find out through edification of how the game works, that, they, oh, they tell me these silly Santa stories and God stories and silly purpose stories and silly, oh, we're doing all this and we're Americans and we're great, blah, 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 blah. And I say, oh, this all sounds like a big crock of sh Oh, we slaughtered the Indians. Oh, we did this. Oh, we did slaves. Oh, we did, oh, fuck, we we're really assholes. And that's a subjective value system. It's not just a rational accounting for one's existence. You sit here and you have a few conditions happen to you, a few sicknesses and diseases and whatnot. You see a few other people completely destroyed by, uh, you know, nature in some way, um, you know, drooling on themselves and just horrible. <laughs> and it scares a little bit of the shit out of you as if you aren't already shitting too much, and you're just a little bit fucking uneasy about the whole thing, and then you start really analyzing and thinking about it, and you realize that this is all just a bunch of psychological nonsense, and you're going to call that a subjective value, that I should exchange that opinion, that realization of reality, for some bullshit Catholic smoking yearny thing, or some fucking talking orby thing on the mantle that's going to tell me the ten principles or the seven seals or the fifteen blah blah blahs. Or I should go read some stone tablets that just keep redundantly saying stupid things like, I am God, love me or else I'll send you to hell forever. I should believe that nonsense or flying fucking angels or fucking voodoo or fucking mind reading and quantum photon power. Huh? I should exchange my logical deduction and my logical analysis for insane, insipid nonsense. Oh, yeah, sure I should. Fuck you, you're an idiot. They're subjective values instead. So again, it's subjective. It's subjective. This, the, that thing isn't a reality, that little kitty over there. The fact that it has a sentient brain isn't a reality. No, it's a subjective interpretation of reality. Oh, fuck you. Or, or why, why should anybody change their values in this? change their values. Again, it's just this whole conversation as if value is something we just fucking make up. We don't discover it existing in the world. We don't say, look, that's a value. That person being, uh, you know, having cancer is valuable. That experience of having your first kiss is valuable. These things are valuable. It's not we value, it's that is valuable. Oh, god damn. Instance. Um, but, uh, so, you know, my suggestion after that argument... It, <laughs> yeah, your suggestion. <laughs> oh, wow. Did I pay for that or something? Did I sign up for a suggestion? A great text suggestion of the day. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I got that the other day. Somebody gave me a crank home phone call about... I don't know, cat fact of the day or something. You, know, you get a call every day with a cat fact. Isn't that interesting? But yeah, we could have great text suggestions every day. How useful would that be? Oh, not very really useful. We, if we hold that argument to be the case, and I think it pretty much is, most people value existence over the absence of suffering. 
Yeah, mo most people, again, the argument is going to be made is, is they're addicted lunatics. Most heroin addicts, okay, don't give up their heroin, right? Most, most people doing something stupid, okay, don't know they're idiots and morons, don't realize they're fucking jerks. So why, what? We should, because they don't realize it, we should believe they're not jerks and we should become jerks. Oh, I see. No, I don't think I'll do that. Um, then, uh... I mean, really, you go through the list again. I could just point out again. Do, do you really think the Super Bowl, football in general, yeah, the game of football, do you really think it's worth killing and disabling hundreds of kids a year? Maybe thousands. I don't know what the statistics are. We just know they're statistics. They're real. And it costs real money, too. We actually have extra ambulances in this town just for the fact that when something goes wrong with the little kiddie football, they're going to need more than one. <laughs> you know, that's, it's just ironic that we're spending more money uh, so we have more ambulances so we can take care of the problem of football catastrophe. Do, do you think it's a rational equation that just because people keep doing it, it means that they really seriously analyzed it and seriously voted for it? The fact that people will say, oh, yes, I love life, life's great, life, life, life. Does it really mean that they did the, the math, that they really thought about it in any kind of deep way? No, it doesn't. And that's the problem. Vote superficially. Yes. Say yes. Don't think. Don't, don't be responsible in, in, in making an informed decision. Just say yes. For the atheists out there, uh, you're, and then my next sentence is, you're pretty much fighting a futile, subjective, uphill struggle. Yeah, well, whatever. You can say that all you want, but the fact is it wasn't any struggle for me to get here. It was just a matter of living a little bit on planet Earth and just applying a little bit of honesty to the problem. So, again, you can keep saying, oh, it can't happen. This ain't going to blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm saying I think it can. Certainly people have been doing things for thousands of years that we don't do anymore, and they don't even miss them. I mean, I don't think there's any American right now sitting in his couch. Even though there's 400 million Americans, I bet you it's point zero 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 one percent of them are sitting on their couch right now going, damn, I sure miss bullfighting. I don't think they do. You know, I'm trying to convert people to ethelism. Uh, and I think that's a fact. I mean, it's been going on for years on YouTube and, you know, what's... You know, even the very idea that you say convert them, you know, so you'd say convert somebody to evolution, convert somebody to some other fact of reality, some other recognition of a fact, that that's a conversion process. Come on. Where's your legislation? Where's your Democratic Party? And, you know, where's your institutions of power and so on? Nowhere. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that means again. So so it's just this whole idea. So by your logic, we human race could never evolve above the state it's at now, which is um, droning other people, uh, wars all over the place. You know, not as big, not no world wars for a while, but yeah, there's, it's it's easily conceivable that that could happen. Um, so where's your um, reason to say, oh, it's going to all be all right? that we're not going to pay a catastrophic price for this optimism. If people can't change by your definition, um, then we're colossally doomed in the next two or three hundred years because technology is going to get to a point where, yes, a few disgruntles will be able to kill millions. So ha-ha on you, you're going to lose anyway, jackass. There's going to be, you know, more dirt on your face. Um, so it then follows, you know, if this is futile, this if it was something, um, and if life is also futile, then the individual is left with a choice to live a good life. Oh, hey, a good life doing what? Creating human beings? Like that's what they're really good at, creating human beings. People are really good at creating human beings. There's no evidence that they do that all that well. 
there's every evidence that the people mostly doing it now are the most irresponsible and ignorant people on earth. So if you're dumb and stupid and reckless, yeah, you have kids. If you're at all informed, educated, and responsible, you don't have kids. So by that popularity standard, <laughs> okay, by, by just that piece of evidence of demographics, um, what's it point to? That having kids is the smart thing to do or having kids is the dumb thing to do? Yeah, I think we know the answer. Or if you're going to choose what kind of life you want to live, do you want to live a good one with good perceptions about the world? Well, good perceptions about the world, what does that mean? Uh, you know, so if you are concerned, even to by your definition excessively, uh, about the harm and suffering in the world, that's not being a good person. A good person ignores the harm and suffering and gets drunk and laughs and farts and belches. Oh, I see. Fuck you. That can enable you to change things and alleviate suffering, or do you want to... Oh yeah, again, change things and alleviate suffering. How? Oh, uh, knit band-aids. Let's all go knit some band-aids to be flabby. <laughs> to be looking really old. Um, to be an ass wipe. Um, to be face in ass. Um, you know, whatever. You really think that's a, a rational argument, that you're going to solve the problem by doing the same thing all over again. Just keep playing a dumb game. And don't just raise your hand and say, hey, you know what, I think it's a dumb game. I think it's insufficiently efficient. And there's every prospect that that's sort of what it's made to be. It's made to kill a thousand to make one. And we're really not going to change that depressing one where you wake up and you think, you know, this is horrible, this all has to end, I have no power to end it, but I will continue to fight to end it, even though I'm not doing anything in particular to end that fight. <clears throat> to end that fight. You didn't even say that right. To win that fight, you could say. Um, well, again, you know, this is every, every political issue, could you even call these political issues, every subject regarding the human race's um, behavior through history has, there was debates and there was arguments and there was these kinds of things. So I'm just saying for you to say this is not the way to do it. It's just stupid. I mean, it's of every way there's ever been change, this is how you make change, is that you make arguments for change. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it has successfully been done, retard. And somebody has to start those arguments. And so you're just being a naysayer and a nitpicker in a completely irrational way. Like, well, because you're not winning, there's no cause to fight. So in the early days of the abolition movement, they all should have quit. Because Grey Text says you, you're not winning. Therefore, you're, you can't win. And women, who, you know, in terms of their rights, they should have just given up in the beginning because they weren't winning. It's amazing. I mean, if you've got a choice of what kind of life you want to live, why wouldn't you choose a good one? You know? A good one how? Right, you mean a selfish, hedonistic, uh, what's in it for me life. And then even if you did that, if you're smart, you know that doesn't, you're not going to win anyway. You're still going to die. And when you die, you're probably still going to be saying, gee, i got shit to get done. So again, good life, good life doing what? Doing what you want to do? Silly shit that I don't want to do? I should do silly shit that I don't want to do. Yeah, it might be better if I could spend more time doing physics because, yeah, I think I got the answer for the physics thing. I got the unifying theory and I got all that stuff. And this is probably a distraction from that. And there's other social issues I, yeah, I could spend more time on. But technically, this is the biggest... This is, you want to really cure the disease, this is the cure. Get rid of the asshole, idiotic delusions inside your little head. And that's all they are. They're just delusions in your head. You're the problem, douchebag. Your silly notions are the only problem. If your silly notions of the human race existing for millions of years aren't realized, 
there will be no negative consequence. There will be no suffering. There will be no angst and horror and terror. There will be no punishment for it whatsoever. No one will go to hell if the human race isn't here for a million years. But if it is here, there's every prospect that sentience all over the place is going to do a hell of a lot of suffering. So, you're the fucking problem. And particularly little idiotic... I'm an egomaniac. I'm an egomaniac. Even though you have no reason to be one. That's the, that's the irony. You're a fucking disaster. And you're sitting there advocating for make some more disasters. Um, why wouldn't you go out and try and alleviate something? Oh, well, again, yes, yes, with band-aids. Yeah, why don't you just keep sopping up the blood and the puke and all this other stuff and just clean up the mess, okay, instead of preventing the mess. That was, it's a terrible idea to stop a mess from being made. Prevention is the stupidest thing you could possibly do. I mean, come on. The homeless person is so money in your you know, <laughs> yeah, we know how that doesn't work. We know how feeding the poor doesn't work. We know how all of these things don't fix the problem. You don't want poor people, you don't create poor people. That's the sense. The simplest way to get rid of the poor don't have to be with us always. They stop as soon as we stop making them. And so, as soon as you stop manufacturing them for the rich to grind up and eat, then they won't exist anymore. But if you're going to keep making them, then you're going to have to live with the consequence of their destruction. Don't make the problem, you don't have to fix the problem. I mean, again, I mean, the prevention is just a really important concept. And what, it just doesn't fit in your brain? It, it doesn't, you don't get it? It's too, too complicated for you? Prevention? Volunteer to work somewhere in, in like a cancer charity or... Uh, yeah, I guess it's just so funny. Yeah, that would be just so fucking rewarding and uplifting, you know, to go watch the very horror you want to prevent and that you think these insidious monsters are creating. I should go. I should go look at the victims of the war I'm trying to prevent, and that'll make me feel good. No, I think that'll make me want to drive my car into something. You know. Something flabby, old. Put your your intellect into, you know, solving massive world problems. Oh, I guess it's just so ironic. Yeah, the solution is, all I have to do is whap you with a certain kind of brick and just knock this delusion out of your head that somehow there's a critical problem if we don't keep making babies. That somehow this doesn't need to happen. And, and it doesn't need to happen in a fundamental way. There's absolutely no negative consequence except your brain is going to say, Oh, that just doesn't sound right. That doesn't seem right. There won't be humans here squeaking around farting 10,000 years from now. Oh, what a tragedy. I'm so upset. And you're saying you're so upset, but I don't even believe you're so upset because you're not upset about the absent Martians and you're not upset about the absent Venetians. So why the fuck would the absent humans bother you? Yes, all of the Star Wars characters are fantasy characters. None of them exist. Does that really upset anybody? I don't think so. They never really lived. There was no Yoda. Yoda never existed. Does that horrify you? I don't think so. There's not even small world problems. Um... Let me give you some advice, asshole. Think better than this. This is such a lame, fucking, useless argument. What, you think somebody who's rational is going to find this at all compelling? Oh, ignore the fact that every rational piece of your brain, every bit of your logic says, holy shit, this is a stupid game we're playing. It's really fucking dumb. And your, your counter-argument is, go be dumb. Play a dumb game. Play a game... Deserve has nothing to do with it. Oh, yes, let's go play Deserve has nothing to do with it. Oh, fuck. You know, or becoming politically active and trying to change the political landscape. 
um, to improve things in the world and alleviate suffering that way. Yes, right. Fight for the right to die and fight for vegetarianism. And fight. Oh, that's right. That's all the things we are doing also. Hmm. I mean, what are you doing? Oh, that's right. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, it's just so ironic, right? Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, yeah, sure, buddy. That there are so many options that you have. There are so many purposes that you can take and make your own. Right. Well, I, you know, I just find this ridiculous, right? I mean, is somebody really going to think, is there somebody going to be persuaded by this argument? I mean, I don't think even Heroin Church would be suspect of being persuaded by this crap. And it's just such crap. Go feed the homeless on Thanksgiving. It'll fix the problem. Or not. And improve things in the world. Um, that are all superior to sitting on YouTube. Oh, says you. For years on end. Thinking that you're actually doing something to end all suffering. Uh, so again, his, his argument would be no political mu movement that ever had a beginning should have ever continued. All of, all of them were futile, even though all evidence is, is that they weren't futile, that uh, over time people realize that things are wrong, and then they have, if they have to, they have civil wars, and they finally get to kill the bad guys and win and say, yay, we're now civilized, or we're a little more civilized, because we killed those motherfucking uncivilized stupid morons. Ugh. I mean, not that it should have to come to that. Again, I'm not advocating for that, but I'm just saying that that's, what, that, that's the proven history, okay? is that you kind of retards, you fucking uh, uh, archaic, antiquated, tradition-sucking motherfuckers are the problem. I mean, you just keep getting in the way of progress, and this is the next phase of progress, and now you're, you know, the fucktard saying, we've always done it this way, we've always been for life. You know, being pro-life is what we've always been. <laughs> yeah, you know, so like wife beaters and slave owners getting together with a bunch of like-minded people and chatting each other, chatting to each other every day or weekend or whenever you just do it. Yeah, whatever that means. So, again, so if... Well, I don't even want to get into that, right? I mean, I've already expressed my opinion on the Saturday night thing, so I guess he's talking about that, and we're just chatting with each other. I mean, 50%, at least 50% of it, is pretty hard philosophy. And I would like 100% of it to be hard philosophy, but no, you cowards don't show up making these lame, weak arguments. So, yeah, exposing the lame-brained, and you are lame-brained. You really are. You have a lame brain, all right? You're the one who ran from the contest, fucker, okay? Because, yeah, you knew you... you I mean, you know these are, are nothing arguments. You've been making the same lame counter-arguments for seven years, and you're going to critique us? Oh, fuck you. Because you've been doing this for years, and you've got no institutions, no power, no nothing other than what you had several years ago when this began, which is... Well, whatever. I mean, that's always, you can say something like that, but I mean, obviously, I could give you emails from people and testimonies from people and all that kind of stuff. So every month, there's somebody who says, wow, you've changed my life, you've changed my perspective, I'm so grateful, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, yeah, it's not exactly rolling as a movement. I'll concede that point. Um, but that's only because I think it is really rough. It's a damn hard pill to swallow, and it takes a while for people to have to gulp at it for a while. But I guess my argument to you is, is there, I would contend there are a lot of people gulping, okay? And the fact that we get so little counter-argument, there's so few videos attacking, even though it's a dramatically aggressive statement we're making, and look how little comes back in terms of a coherent counter-argument. So, yeah, people are gulping, and they're trying, and they're dealing with, okay, the psychological impact. And so maybe it's going to take a little while for that to solidify inside of them. I didn't become a vegetarian in one day. Yeah, it was a period of years where I first recognized there's something wrong with this picture, 
and it was a few years later before I realized, oh, it's, yeah, it's obviously, it's the bones and stuff. Yeah, that's what's wrong with the picture. These bones mean the animal was alive, means it had a brain, means it had a welfare stake, and I totally imprisoned it, tortured it, and killed it. Yeah, so it just took a little while for me to say, yeah, that's the answer, accept my, my bad, and move on. So I'm saying, in time, I think that's going to happen to human beings. They're going to realize that they just can't keep running to Jehovah and angel dust and quantum fairies. The quantum fairies are not going to save mankind. Just talking to each other. Um, so anyway, let's take that to logic for today. So my entire comment is most people value existence over the absence of suffering, a part of existence. You're pretty much making a futile subjective uphill struggle. If life was also futile, I'd rather live a good one than a depressing one. That's the comment. Oh, I'd rather live a good one than a depressing one. So again, it's not about what the truth is. I'd rather not honor the truth if I can weasel out of it. So fine. Yes, so I can create some rationalizations and blah, blah, blah. And what? What is the, what, what is, you know, you can live an unhonorable life or a dishonest life or an intellectually dishonest life and that's a good life? I guess I would argue to you that once you know the truth... Okay, you know some truths, and you know that those truths mean there's certain things you can't do anymore. There's certain things you can't enjoy anymore because you know those truths. Okay, you, you could just play a, some sort of game with, like, religion or something else because you know what it represents. You know the, that it is just, you know, stagnating human evolution and uh, creating a, a social institutions that are totally corrosive to civilization. So you know you can't play those games. You know you couldn't placate that or or give it uh, salute it you wouldn't vote to subsidize it Vaughn says but the thing is that aside for a moment what that aside for a moment uh, I do not really understand why you said I was a homosexual that's plainly not true I'm afraid I just want to clarify that possible misunderstanding not that being homosexual is a bad thing, I just defend the LGBT rights of them for gender equality, racial equality, so I don't want really, well, don't really like any kind of unfair discrimination anyway. Okay, cool. Um, oh, so Great Text is thinking that he can start off a conversation by saying, I think you're a homosexual, and then go, um, and I also think bricks weigh 50 pounds, and I think uh, seals, um, you know, have bad breath. And so he thinks somebody's going to deal with those two other points when, you know, the loaded sentence is the one that this person's going to deal with. So that's just sort of ironic. And then he's completely ignored the whole, you know, why are you an ethnicist argument? It's irrational to be one. Uh, so that, that, that to him is a, an argument defending somehow that it's irrational, okay, to find life insufficiently efficient and to do what you can to prevent further tragedy. That's irrational. And he proved it with what? Most people don't think so. Uh -huh. And logic rolls the dice is 19, and certainly he knows that that's a fallacy, okay? Yeah. So you're just, you're, you're out of your league there, uh, old man. Um, you know, I basically said he's invested in a philosophy that is so pointless and is doing nothing well again this whole investment thing like i invested in it oh yeah i invested in the philosophy i sat here one day and i went through the stock market to quotes and i said ah which philosophy will i personally invest in you know i mean this is just so stupid no know what intelligent people do they go where the evidence points and where their life experience makes obvious. And that's where they go. That's the direction they go in. So you rationally realize that, uh, hey, you know, there's some ways you can make some of this fail safe, right? And so you start doing some fail safing and then you realize, hell, this fail safe thing makes a lot of sense. And then you realize that, hey, you can make the whole thing fail safe. Okay, and it won't cost you anything. It's like giving up meat. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Got potato chips, I got bread, I got peanut butter. What the fuck do I need meat for? 
thing for anyone, other than creating a little social club for them to be a part of. Uh, and okay, so that's another, just a, that's a re reoccurring accusation by this asshole. And again, I am sort of, whatever, the lead or the most blah blah in this whole fucking thing. And there's absolutely nothing social I'm doing on the fucking internet. So it's just, just a lame pile of shit of a goddamn fucking accusation. He's completely missing his life doing it. Completely wasting all this. Wasting his life, how? I mean, really, the, the, you know, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, a, you know, this does take some time if you're going to try to make, you know, rational arguments on the internet and all that kind of stuff. You do have to do some pre-thinking. You have to do just a little bit of thought, and you have to do all that kind of crap. And you really, to be good at it, to be able to do it. Um, so it takes a little bit of time, but let's get realistic, okay? I mean, if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be talking to myself. So what's the difference? I uh, what? And I'd be I'd be better if I spent my time watching some fantasy film. I mean, that's all I've sacrificed to do this is that I'm not watching movies anymore. And there's a few other stupid frivolous things that I don't do anymore to do this instead. I mean, it's just such a silly argument that this investment requires something from me in the first place and that somehow I would invest in a philosophy not based on what the fact that the truth points me there. The facts point me there. I mean, I invested in evolution because I chose to be invested in evolution? I don't think so, idiot. Brain power. Trying to justify what is, in essence, a social club. Um, and yeah, another, you know, just, what, what brilliant counter-arguments. A social club. And, oh, there's none of that in what you say, call your cliché voting um, average Joe that you're defending, right? The average Joe doesn't think so, and he doesn't belong in any, any social clubs or traditional clubs. They're completely owned by tradition. Every fucking thing they do is by tradition. They dress by tradition. They behave by tradition. They're completely owned by tradition. So what a fucking joke. Rather than be offended, offended by that, he was offended by me saying that he's gay. I don't even know if he's offended. He just basically pointed out that what the fuck is this shit for? What what exactly good is this conversation about? What the fuck are you doing, asshole? <laughs> yeah, and it's, look at his stupid face he's making. Uh, I mean, you're just pathetic. I'll make dis distracting accusations in the middle of a philosophical argument. And that's somehow you, you think that's conducive. And again, he's 19 years old and probably a little bit self-conscious. And here you are making accusations that, boy, it sure looked gay to me. And you, and you don't think that's a problem? You're an old man, right? A really old, flabby man. And you can't, you can't take a little bit of critique about your appearance. You flabby, fat, drunken, farting piece of shit. And yet you'll pick on a 19-year-old. You lame-ass child molesting fucker. Um. Anyway, it's all it's no lulls. Yeah, it's all lulls. <laughs> and that's how that. So we got Antikantavad, which is what's in it for me, and we got great text. It's all for the lulls, and that that that's always always been for you know ten years or whatever the fuck long it's been. Right? I remember him describing it as a spectator sport. All right? That's how he looks at it. He's just sitting in the stands, and he's just watching it like it's, like it's a drama on a movie screen. And all these characters are just characters, and like all of it doesn't matter, right? Because that's the truth of it, right? There's no job of the hut in reality, and he didn't get strangled, and none of the shit that happened happened. Right? When the heroes die, they don't really die because they're not really existing. And so it really doesn't matter and they don't really suffer. So that's what he thinks is happening in reality. He thinks it's a fucking movie. It's something you just eat popcorn and watch for the lulls. God. And you wonder why I have absolute contempt for the human race. Because these are the people that can actually speak. They can actually talk semi-articulately and put a few sentences together and this is the crap they're saying 
Just imagine what the dumb fuckers are thinking in their heads if this is what semi-literate people will say. And I shouldn't be terrified that I'm on Planet of the Maggot? That's probably enough. <laughs> yeah, we'll move on. So, I don't know. This is going to be an hour and a half's worth. I'll probably cut it into two videos. We'll just see how it works out when I throw it in the editor. So, until next time, and such, and so forth, and whatnot.